Hey, good morning. How y'all doing? It is well read beard and it's a damn fine day to talk about a book and today we are here for a book review and we're going to talk about razor blade tears by s.a cosby and i believe this is from flat iron books um let's talk about the synopsis you want to hear the synopsis here we go ike randolph has been out of jail for 15 years with not so much as a speeding ticket in all that time. But a black man with cops at the door knows to be afraid. The last thing he expects to hear is that his son Isaiah has been murdered, along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. I can never fully accept his son, but is devastated by his loss. Derek's father, Buddy Lee, was almost as ashamed of Derek for being gay as Derek was ashamed of his father's criminal record. Buddy Lee still has contacts in the underworld, though, and he wants to know who killed his boy. I can Buddy Lee two ex-cons with little in common other than a criminal past and a love for their dead sons band together in their desperate desire for revenge, in their quest to do better for their sons in death than they did in life, these hardened men will confront the, prejudi the prejudices about their sons and each other as they rain down vengeance upon those who hurt their boys. Uh, this book is fucking amazing. I loved this book. This book is a five-star read. Um, everybody said that. Everybody said how great this book is. And rarely does that pay off and and maybe the fact that i waited a bit to get into it maybe that helps but i don't think so i just think it's that damn good and again i'm not going to mention any other books but a lot of times when a book is being raved about like it gets built up so high in my head that it, it has a hard time um meeting those expectations this book uh surpassed those expectations this book is awesome uh, i love this book um now um uh, it's my second cosby read uh i've only read my darkest prayer and i didn't like that one uh now don't get me wrong when i say that there were parts in that book that i loved like one-liners like i mean there's a line in there when um you know just the shit that you wish you could think of the cool thing to say being confronted by a bully or whatever and and you know the character says talk shit spit blood i mean four words but just cool as fuck and, and there were things like that throughout that book a lot of stuff about poor white kids and poor black kids and um and i enjoyed those parts of the book but there's there's one element of it that i didn't like and if you want to know about that you got to go watch the vid so uh um anyway but this book this book is amazing. I mean, again, a, a, a poor white criminal redneck and a, um, a black uh, ex-con uh, trying to, uh, you know, pull himself up by his bootstraps and, and, you know, make something of himself after prison, meet at their dead son's grave, you know, at the, the, the burial of their two dead sons. And, um and again these these dudes both have hard backgrounds and uh, but they're aging they're older like i don't know if i ever put like a number or, or like but i mean they're in their 50s at least maybe older maybe 60s but uh you know and they are set on this course to figure out what happened to their boys and there's just some again now i did this in audio so um I lose a lot of, I mean, I know there's ways to mark it on the audio, but I lose a lot of, you know, marking things that I love. But I did early on, um, you know, while I was listening, I went and grabbed the hard copy and, and marked a few things. But uh, um, just some fabulous paragraphs, some fabulous lines. Um, here's an example. There's a motherfucker walking around right now. He's getting up in the morning and he's eating him a big breakfast. Then he goes on and does whatever the fuck he does during the day. Then he probably gets him a piece of ass at the end of the night. This motherfucker killed our children. He popped them full of holes like a piece of chicken wire. Then he stood over them 
and blew their fucking, sorry, I can't turn the page, damn it, blew their fucking brains out. Now, I don't know about you, but I can't live with myself while that son of a bitch is on this side of the dirt. But it's Buddy Lee. Buddy Lee said that shit. There's a, um, there's a bunch of them. Uh, uh, Ike, uh, you know, fuck, he, he didn't want to get involved. I mean, he, you know, old Ike, Riot, went by Riot back in his, his old days, his criminal days. Um, he, di he didn't want to get involved, but then they, they went and, like, uh, vandalized the headstone, vandalized his, his son's grave. And he said, I was all set to let the police handle this, even though I knew they probably wouldn't find out who did it. I was willing to let those motherfuckers get away with it because the promise I had made to my wife and my son was more important than getting even. But then they had to go and fuck up his grave. And it was like I realized, what good is a promise if my son is dead and my wife looks at me like she wishes I was the one in the ground? It's like you said, that cracked up headstone is my boy asking me, what the fuck am I going to do about this? Just wonderful lines. And, and you, so, it takes a while to find out who it is, who is behind um, Buddy Lee and Ike's son's murder. And I'm not going to tell you that, but I will say that there's, you know, the, um, that this guy has, um, like a motorcycle gang doing his dirty work. So this got that whole sons of anarchy feel aspect to it. Uh, and, um, and so there are multiple scenes with, um, you know, confrontations with those guys. Uh, there's a scene, um, where they, they take one of them and, and they, um, they have him tied up. They're trying to trying to get information, but it's, you know, it's a bit of a torture scene. And I'm just going to say that there is a, uh, I like when people use um, odd things to accomplish um, these these purposes. When they, you know, we we've we've had you know the um, you know the fucking uh, what is it bush snippers the the pliers the the hammers. We, but uh, there's a scene that uses a, a tamper and you know like a big heavy soil tamper and um that's a cool scene uh there's a couple other things i want to talk about here and then i'll get uh, a little bit more into it um so um buddy lee is talking about you know um who he is and, and uh um and he's talking to derek hey, even though derek's gone but he says uh i know if you was here you'd tell me to let it go that it wasn't worth it then I'd have to steal one of your lines, Buddy Lee said. He rose to his feet and brushed the dirt from his jeans. His eyes burned, but he was too tired to cry. This is who I am. I can't change. I don't want to, really. But for once, I'm going to put this devil inside me to good use. So that's about as far as, as I'll go. You know, both, both parents were unaccepting of their gay sons. I mean, so there is a lot of, we're watching these old dogs learn new tricks. I mean, we're watching them come to terms with their homophobia, uh, their racism. Um, there's an element in this story that, you know, will even address transphobic issues. There's a trans character that plays a major role in the book, and I'm not going to go too much into that. But so you are getting a wonderful uh, vengeance retribution type story. Um, I mean, Ike is a badass motherfucker and, and Buddy Lee as well. And so you're getting that relationship, the dialogue between the two guys that probably would have never talked to each other in, other, in any other situation. Um, just the, the what you watch them grow page to page. You watch them realize that how awful they were in life and that that at the end of the day um they didn't really give a fuck who their boys were sleeping with you know if they could just have them back you know alive um and, and again so it's got the homophobic stuff the the racism stuff and the transphobic stuff and just a lot of uh really really cool underlying themes in this 
what would already be just uh, amazing crime, you know, fiction story. Um, I loved it. I, I loved the ending. Um, there was, I was concerned that Mr. Cosby was going to kill one particular character. Um, and I was relieved to see that it didn't go that way. Um, I've seen a lot of people, you know, putting like crying emojis and shit when I was talking about reading this book. And I was a bit concerned about one particular character, but, uh, ultimately I, I loved the ending. I loved, uh, all the underlying messages and I loved the action, the dialogue, the constant i like a book with motherfuckers in it i'm just gonna say it i i mean you i mean you sometimes you gotta use it to get the point across and uh, i mean i read a couple small segments there and i think they both uh had some motherfuckers in there so uh i um i loved it i love this book um i've got black top wasteland here that i'm gonna go back it's the i, I believe that's well there's i went and looked at cosby's work and he's got another one that, I, that the name escapes me but he had another book before My Darkest Prayer and then Blacktop Wasteland and then this one. And I think he's already got a new one coming out. But I'm I'm absolutely a fan. Again, My Darkest Prayer was a bit of a miss for me. Um, but Razorblade Tears is amazing. And again, one of the few books that has has surpassed the hype train. Um, I, I loved it. And so I got Blacktop Wasteland coming soon. I was going to go straight from this one into it, but I'm doing um, Fairy Tale by Stephen King on audio. Then I'll probably circle right back to Blacktop Wasteland. But uh, it's just an excellent book. It really is. It's everything you want. Uh, you know, a lot of times these big books, these big bestsellers, the, you know, I mean, uh, you know, a lot of times they'll fall a bit flat for me. And it just wasn't the case. It's just excellent. So uh, Razorblade Tears. S.A. Cosby. I loved it. It's a five-star read for me. Um, I said, this is Well Read Beard. It's been my review. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're enjoying all your books, all of them, as much as I am. If not, you're reading the wrong damn books.